What's up guys, my name is S-Fan and I'm making this video today to talk to you guys about Paladin leveling in phase one of WoW Classic Season of Discovery. My goal with this guide is to make a concise but informative video for new players to either the class or to WoW Classic in general from the perspective of somebody who's spent more than an acceptable amount of time playing a video game from 2004. This is, uh, this is a bit of a passion project for me with Season of Discovery coming out. I used to do guides and stuff like this on my streams years ago whenever I first started on private servers back in 2017. So if the feedback for this video is good, people like it, I really would like to keep making more of it. So uh, like the video, leave a comment, any of that, and uh, let's get started. So the first things first, let's talk about important skills and the levels in which you get them. Whenever you're starting on your Paladin, you're going to have two skills primarily. That's Seal of Righteousness at level one and Holy Light at level one. Uh, Holy Light is your uh, your big heal single target that you use uh, to, to be able to heal yourself up whenever you take damage. And then Seal of Righteousness is your main damage seal. What a seal is, it is a, is a 30 second buff that you put on your character that has some sort of effect based on your weapon attacks. In the case of Seal of Righteousness, it is a flat holy damage add every single time that you attack. So you wanna make sure that your Seal of Righteousness is up for every single auto attack that you have. A few levels later, what you're going to get is you're going to get Judgment. Judgment takes that seal that you buffed yourself with and it expels that energy out into a direct attack on your target. Different seals have different effects. The effect of Seal of Righteousness is just a flat damage attack. It's a, it's a direct damage attack. So you cast Seal of Righteousness on yourself and then after Seal of Righteousness is cast on yourself, you use Judgment to expel that holy energy into your enemy and it does a very significant amount of damage at the level in which you get it, at level four, and this damage will go up with the different ranks of Seal of Righteousness. Down the road, you get other seals with different effects that will debuff the target with effects that typically will help the Paladin or your teammates whenever you attack that target. The other thing you get at level four is Blessing of Might. Blessing of Might is a flat attack power increase. It is very, very powerful. A lot of people ask why Paladin buffs are only five minutes. It's because they're very powerful and they're for a short period of time. You can cast it on yourself, you can cast it on other players, and you can get improved blessings at level 60, at higher levels, very strong buff. At the early levels, it's not that great and, and doesn't scale super well but as you get higher level, it's really, really good. The next thing that you get is the bubble. At level six, you get divine protection. This is a very iconic spell for paladins. This is going to make you completely immune to damage on a five minute cooldown for six seconds. So during that time with divine protection specifically, you cannot attack or use any physical abilities. You can, however, cast. So a lot of times what people will do, they'll bubble and then they'll heal themselves. Really, really simple. The next thing you get at level six is seal of the crusader. What Seal of the Crusader does is it increases your attack power and it increases your attack speed. So you're auto attacking faster with more attack power, but not necessarily more damage because it reduces the amount of damage you do with the, with the speed increase. Whenever you judge Seal of the Crusader, it increases the holy damage taken by the target by up to 20. What that means is it basically takes whatever attack you're using on your target and treats it as if you have a plus 20 holy damage stat just added to your character on all on all spells. The next spell you get is Hammer of Justice. Hammer of Justice is a one minute cooldown stun that you get at level eight. This is great for keeping yourself alive, for reducing the amount of damage you do. The next spell that you get is Purify. That'll remove a disease or a poison effect at level eight. At level 10, the key spells you'll get. Blessing of Protection. You can cast this on your teammates as well. It works very similarly to Divine Protection in that you cannot use physical abilities or attack. It's on a five minute cooldown by default and then also gives you that forbearance debuff for one minute to where if you cast one bubble on somebody, you can't cast another bubble. So let's say you cast Divine Protection on yourself earlier, you can't cast Blessing of Protection on yourself within a minute. Both on separate five minute cooldowns, but within a minute, you can't cast them both on yourself. The next key ability is Lay on Hands. Lay on Hands basically burns your entire mana pool and it gives you a full heal. So it burns your entire mana pool and then it heals your target, which could be you or a teammate, for the entirety of what your health pool is. So the more health you have, the bigger your Lay on Hands. Uh, at higher levels, Lay on Hands also gives you a little bit of mana. At level 14, you get your next Blessing. Blessing of Wisdom. Blessing of Wisdom is fantastic for leveling. And this gives you 10 mana every five seconds for five minutes. Level 16 is another huge level for Paladins while they're leveling because you get two 
key spells. One, you get Retribution Aura. Retribution Aura is a damage return aura that is always active, uh, as long as you have it active, for the entirety of your group. This is very, very powerful while you're leveling. It doesn't scale with any stats, so it's just a, it's a flat damage return. Usually, it's the most powerful when you get it at that level. And also at level 16, you get something called Righteous Fury. Righteous Fury is a 30-minute buff that increases the amount of threat that you generate with your holy spells on a target. So let's say you're grouped with somebody, you're doing a quest, you're doing a dungeon. Maybe you're the tank for the group as the paladin, and you want to make sure that your healers aren't getting attacked, you would put Righteous Fury on yourself so that your holy spells generate a higher amount of threat. That way you, you, you keep everybody else safe. Righteous Fury is very good. The next thing you get at level 18, the next key ability that you get is Blessing of Freedom. Blessing of Freedom is a, is a short-term blessing. It's very powerful, just like Blessing of Protection, that'll replace whatever blessing you currently have active. And what it'll do is it'll actually clear you of any sort of snare, root, slow, a anything like that, as long as it's not a hard CC, like a, uh, like a stun or an incapacitate. Blessing of Freedom is, is going to help keep you alive. At level 20, you get Exorcism. Exorcism is uh, is a direct damage, holy attack. So against undead and demons, you can use exorcism and you can do a significant amount of holy damage and you get it right at level 20. A lot of paladins will go and they'll start leveling in Duskwood around this time. This is one of the reasons why Duskwood becomes one of the more le fun leveling zones in my opinion. Uh, you, you get basically a brand new ability that you can use there with a lot of the zombies and stuff like that. The next key ability that you get at level 20 is Flash of Light. Flash of Light is a short, quick heal, doesn't cost a lot of mana, uh, that you can spam on yourself to, to keep yourself up. It has a one and a half second cast time, unlike Holy Light, but this is a, this is a great ability to just tick, 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 be able to heal yourself up real quick, either after a fight or uh, during a fight in between your, your enemy swings while you're leveling. At level 22, you get Seal of Justice. Seal of Justice doesn't have much use while you're leveling as a seal, but as a judgment, that you can put on the target, it's actually very, very useful because a lot of times while you're leveling, you'll notice that you're attacking mobs, you're attacking enemies, get scared at low health, and they run away and they try and find other other mobs to ask for help from, and then they will both come at you. What Judgment of Justice does is it makes it to where they can no longer flee. So if you're fighting mobs that have uh, that, that have that feature where they run away at low health, you can cast just Judgment of Justice on them and you can keep them from running away. This actually can also be cast while they're running away and it'll, uh, it'll stop them from running. Also at level 22, you'll get Concentration Aura. So Concentration Aura is nice to give you a 35% chance to not have your spells push back while you're casting. This is great in a group if like a healer is attack is being attacked or if you're being attacked, you want to have concentration aura up so you can reliably be able to heal yourself. Anything like that. Concentration aura is really, really powerful. The last key ability that you'll get on your way to level 25 in phase one of Season of Discovery is Turn Undead. Turn Undead is nice because again, you'll be in Duskwood probably doing some leveling here. You'll get it at level 24. Turn Undead if you pull extra zombies or whatever, if you need to get away in a bind. You can turn undead one of the zombies, you can run away or heal or anything else that you need to do. This does not work against undead players. And the same thing goes for exorcism earlier. They're purely PVE abilities by default. Okay, so that is it for all the key spells that you get as a paladin and what exactly they do. So in original vanilla WoW, uh, a lot of people will talk about paladins as a, just all they do is auto attack but you'll see very quickly as you play the class, uh, it has a very robust kit with a lot of tools. Your support class is what you are. Wh whether it's the different blessings, whether it's, you know, you, you can stun, you can heal, you can do damage, you can do good burst, and you, you start noticing as you're leveling how, how many useful spells and useful abilities you actually have. But let's get into the talents. So, I would say there's two ways, as far as leveling talents go, and I don't necessarily think these are the same sort of talent builds that you should go with while you're sitting at a quote max level. It's not, it's not true max level, but it's going to be max level for phase one of Season of Discovery, which is level 25. Uh, I think these are the talents that you should get on your way to level 25 while you're leveling. And then you can respec once you get there and enjoy the game however you want. But I would say there's primarily two different builds that I would go while leveling as a Paladin in Season of Discovery. So Paladins have three talent trees, Holy, Protection, and Retribution. The first Paladin leveling build that I wanna talk about, the first le Paladin leveling talent build that I wanna talk about uh, is what I call the tank leveling build uh, or Holy leveling build. 
Now you're saying, okay, you have points in holy. Why, why is this the tank build? The reason being is because, like I said, you play the class, not the spec. A tank paladin, a protection paladin, one of their primary abilities is actually the 11 point talent in holy, consecration. Consecration does a ground targeted point blank AOE damage over time. That is, it, it ticks on the ground. It doesn't tick on the enemies for eight seconds. This is the key spell that makes Paladins such powerful AOE tanks. Arguably the best AOE tanks in WoW throughout the different expansions. If you want to do the tank leveling build, which is what I personally think is the safer build, or if you want to tank dungeons at level 25, or you want to tank dungeons while leveling, whether it's Wailing Caverns, whether it's Dead Mines, whether it's Shadowfang Keep, whatever it is, this is what you want to do. You want to rush Consecration in Holy. How you would get there is you would want to put five points in Divine Intellect, which increases your total intellect by 10%. You can go Divine Strength. Strength increases your block value and increases the amount of damage that you do with your one-handed weapon. But the reason why I say you should go Intellect for this build is because Intellect is primarily more valuable um, for a Paladin, at, especially at low levels, because it's harder to keep your mana up. The amount of strength that you'll have on your gear is going to be so little that it's not going to scale particularly well, unless you're playing at end game and playing Retribution or something like that. So you probably want to go Divine Intellect, and this is, this is the idea behind this is this is the, quote, safer build. Uh, you'll have more mana to use to be able to heal yourself while you're leveling. You'll have more mana to use to be able to use your spells. Uh, higher Intellect also increases your spell critical strike chance, which is... Uh, what your judgment of righteousness is based off of. So Divine Intellect is, uh, is a good pick for the first talent. In the second tier of the Holy Tree for this build, if you're going for safety while leveling, I would recommend going Spiritual Focus. We talked about Spell Pushback with Concentration Aura earlier. Spiritual Focus gives your Flash of Light and Holy Light spells a 70% chance always, without the aura or anything, 70% chance to not lose casting time when you take damage. If you're in a bind and you're getting attacked, you can heal yourself more reliably. You still might get pushed back while they hit you, but you can heal yourself more reliably uh, and you'll have more mana to do so because of your divine intellect. At level 20, you finally get Consecrate that we talked about. Consecrate, like I said, uh, it's, it's great for killing multiple things at a time. Uh, your healers are going to love you because you cast Righteous Fury on yourself, you put con Consecration down, you are gonna generate a ton of threat and be able to tank a bunch of stuff at the same time. So Consecration, good. And that is the last point that you would want to get in Holy for the tank leveling build. Next, now that you're level 20, we're gonna go with the next five points all the way up to level 25. You want to go with Readout. Readout is a talent that increases your chance to block attacks with your shields by 30% after being the victim of a critical strike. So if you get crit, for 10 seconds or five blocks, whichever comes first, um, you have a 30% increased block chance. This will help mitigate damage when you're AOE tanking, when you're tanking a bunch of stuff at the same time, especially. When you're fighting one target, it's unlikely that you're going to burn all five blocks in 10 seconds. But if you're fighting, you know, two, three, four things at a time, then uh, readout is really useful and, and you can probably get the full effect out of it to, uh, to get all five of those blocks. But this is a... Uh, fantastic talent to mitigate damage while you're tanking for your groups all the way to level 25 or to mitigate damage for yourself while you're leveling. So that's what I call the tank leveling build. Some people call it holy uh, or consecrate or whatever. So that's the, that's the safe leveling build. Now let's talk about what I prefer to do typically whenever I level retribution. I like just going straight retribution for leveling and there's a, uh, there's a few different things that you can do here and, and you might hear of people doing where they might wanna go and get divine strength and holy or do some do some other stuff with their talents. And uh, unfortunately at level 25, it's I don't think it's as wise to do that. Um, however, uh, this is the build that I would like to go with for retribution. First things first, you have improved blessing of might and you have benediction as your options uh, at level 10. I think the place you should put your first five points into is benediction. Uh, to help reduce the mana cost of your judgments and your seals by 15%. This is good while leveling. The next thing that you want to do. At higher levels, you might want to look at improved seal of the crusader. You might want to look at improved judgment. But while you're leveling, 
Perry is the god stat. Perry is amazing. Five points in deflection increases your parry by 5%. The reason why parry is so valuable is that is a 5% chance for whenever an enemy monster, whenever an enemy is attacking you, to not only completely negate the damage, think about it this way, it completely negates the damage, but also there's a, there's a uh, concept called parry haste. And whenever you parry an attack, you get parry hasted, meaning you will attack back faster on your next swing. You will attack back 40% faster on the next swing after you parry. So now parry not only reduces the amount of damage that you take, it also increases the amount of damage that you do because you're swinging back faster. Your class is based off of auto attacks, right? With your seal and your, your autos and your judgments and all that, right? Not your judgments necessarily, but yeah. But you're also reducing your downtime because you are taking less damage. You need to heal for less. You need to spend, or sorry, you need to heal less after fights. You need to spend less mana to kill your target. So deflection, parry is, is the, the god stat for leveling in vanilla wow as a rep paladin this is just a little bit of extra information we just talked about why parry is so valuable i want to talk about specifically why improved judgment is not good while leveling and why improved seal of the crusader is not good while leveling you're you don't really have the opportunity to judge off cooldown while you're leveling because a lot of times while you're leveling you are managing your mana and you are going to auto attack with a seal for for much longer than the eight or ten second period before your judgment comes up because you're trying to uh, just regen mana and not cast spells to trigger the five second rule for your spirit regen. This is a little bit more advanced and maybe I can talk about it a little bit later, but uh, improved judgment doesn't really increase your DPS that much by having two less second cooldown on judgment. In my opinion, it effectively doesn't really increase it at all because you're not really judging on cooldown often. Um, and it also burns more mana, so it increases your downtime. Improved Seal of the Crusader increases the melee attack power bonus of Seal of the Crusader and the holy damage bonus of Judgment of the Crusader by 15% with three points in. You don't really use Seal of the Crusader often or Judgment of the Crusader often, but I'm about to talk about that soon whenever we get into our different tips and stuff like that. The next thing that you do now that you're level 20, you get Seal of Command. Seal of Command is the staple. It is iconic. This is your big damn. This is, you know, you... Whenever you see the Paladin jump up in the air and just slam his sword down, slam his mace down into his enemy, that's the Seal of Command animation, and it is wonderful. Seal of Command does 70% of your weapon damage as holy damage. What does this mean? Because it is holy damage, it cuts through their armor. So there's no armor reduction from them being a, a high armor target. So a lot of times you'll see that yellow Seal of Command hit that pops up be equal or higher than the white damage on the auto attack. The reason why is because that 70% is calculated at your character screen, it's not calculated off of your hit. Uh, the Judgment for Seal of Command uh, does direct damage, like Seal of Righteousness, like Judgment of Righteousness, uh, but it also will do double damage if the target is stunned or incapacitated, if they're Hammer of Justice or Repentance. We can talk about that later. The next five points that I would place for Retribution while I'm leveling is I would go straight into Conviction. So at low levels, Tertiary stats, Green stat, whatever you want to call it, they're kind of at a premium. Stuff like Crit Strike Chance, uh, Hit Chance, uh, even Spell Power, stuff like that, it's at a premium. So when you're able to get 5% critical strike chance with melee weapons, uh, conviction is, is huge. Big damage, uh, you know, some people might say go into divine strength and get that strength. That scaling attack power increase that you'll get by having 10% more strength is not really worth it because at low levels you have such little strength that uh, the chance to do double damage with a crit is much more valuable with Conviction. So I would just go straight 16 points into Retribution. That's it for the two separate talent builds that I would recommend for leveling. The Ret leveling build and the Tank leveling build, the Holy leveling build, where one, you get Consecration, one, you get Seal of Command. Now this is what I would recommend, again, this is for leveling and Season of Discovery. The base of what Season of Discovery is is very similar to Classic WoW, but now is when things start to get different. Let's talk about the runes. The runes are the things that they're adding into this game to uh, basically expand on what the classes already have. Not everything here I think is going to be definitive and, and final forever, but this is what they've shown pre-launch for phase one at level 25. So you have runes currently on three different slots. 
you have glove runes, you have leg runes, and you have chest runes. And we are going to start by talking about the chest runes. The chest runes that you have are Seal of Martyrdom, which is, uh, it's kind of a combination between Seal of Command and Seal of Righteousness. You will do 30% weapon damage as holy damage every single attack, but you lose health equal to 10% of the damage that you do with that 30% attack. Also, while this seal is active, your party members within 40 yards will gain mana equal to 10% of the damage that you take from this seal. Whenever I first read this, I thought this was gonna be insanely overpowered. It's actually not that good because it's the damage that you take, not the damage that you inflict. So it's just a little bit a little bit extra juice, right? It's a little bit of salt. So Seal of the Martyrdom is uh, individually going to be your highest DPS seal. And if you want to go with that gameplay in Season of Discovery as a Rep Paladin, uh, Seal of Martyrdom is, is probably going to be the play. If you judge this seal, it instantly causes 70% of weapon damage at the cost of health equal to 10% of the damage inflicted. So that's equal to like a Seal of Command proc. The next rune is Divine Storm. Divine Storm is an ability that Paladin has actually gotten Wrath of the Lich King. It is a cleave, it is a whirlwind AOE attack, does 110% of your weapon damage. It's a physical attack to up to four enemies within eight yards. Uh, Divine Storm gameplay is uh, kind of the alternative to Seal of Martyrdom gameplay, which is more the Wrath of the Lich King Paladin style. Uh, this also will heal up to three party or raid members for 25% of the damage that you caused. Pretty cool. So uh, typically what you're gonna be doing is you'll probably be choosing as a, as a rep paladin, uh, you'll be choosing between one of these two runes, uh, either Divine Storm or Seal of Martyrdom. There's two remaining chest runes to talk about. One is Aegis. Aegis increases your block value by 30% and damaging melee and ranged attacks against you have a 10% chance to increase your chance to block by 30%. This lasts 10 seconds or five blocks. It's not cumulative with readout. It does not stack with readout. How Aegis will work with readout is if you get crit, you have a guaranteed chance, you have a 100% chance that you'll have 30% block bonus uh, for 10 seconds or five blocks. What Aegis will do, Aegis on every single attack against you have a 10% chance to proc it, even if you don't get crit. Aegis is really nice because getting crit is antithetical really to what you want to have happen as a tank to begin with. Aegis is going to be your tank rune. Aegis will overwrite readout if it procs over readout, and readout will will overwrite Aegis. It's still worth to be specced into readout if you're tanking, because it'll just give you more opportunities to have that block bonus up. The last chest rune is Horn of Lordaeron. This is probably what you're going to be using as a Holy Paladin. This increases the total strength and agility of all party members within 30 yards. It's it's a two minute buff, 20 second cooldown. Uh, so it's it's like a, it's essentially like a battle shout, and it's an additional buff that does not stack with Blessing of Might. This is something that's really only useful if you are the only Paladin in a group. Let's say you're the Holy Paladin and you wanna, uh, you wanna have Wisdom up on somebody and you wanna have a Strength and Agility buff on somebody, or if you wanna give them a Strength buff while giving them Blessing of Salvation, which you do not have until level 26. So it will not be in phase one of Season of Discovery. Next up, we have our Leg Runes. There's four Leg Runes to choose from. Uh, the first of which is Divine Sacrifice. Divine Sacrifice takes 30% of all damage taken by your party members within 30 yards uh, and redirects it to the Paladin for 10 seconds. If your Paladin's health drops below 20%, it will actually break the effect, but it'll give you a 10% increased damage and healing buff for 10 seconds. So if everybody in your group's taking a lot of damage, you can use this two minute cooldown. This could be something that's nice and you kind of just let your, your health go down below 20% and then you get a 10% healing buff uh, for a little bit because you're not getting hit. So you're not really worried about dying. As a tank, you could also do this for threat generation, but it's really risky and you probably don't need to. Uh, this is something that's also very powerful in PVP, but again, this guide's not about PVP. Um, we're just going over the runes as well and what you'll be able to discover leading up to level 25. The next leg rune is Inspiration Exemplar. Your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects on nearby party members. If this can be cast on yourself, if this can proc on yourself, let's say you're not even in a group with anybody and you're, you're 1v1 with somebody and you can get your fear randomly dispelled, this could actually be incredibly, incredibly powerful. The next leg rune is Avenger's Shield. Avenger's Shield is a classic Paladin spell. Captain America, you throw your shield out and it jumps to uh, three total targets. So you throw your shield at something and then it bounces to two additional targets and then, you know, your shield comes back to you or whatever, right? You, you always have the shield, but for the RP, it's like Captain America. Throw out Avenger's Shield. Uh, this will do uh, damage based on your spell power and your attack power, 
actually. Uh, as of right, as of before Season of Discovery launch, it'll be based both on spell power and attack power. It'll daze targets for 10 seconds. So, really good opener, ranged pull for protection paladin, for a tank paladin. The next rune is going to be Exorcist, the next leg rune. We talked about how Exorcism could only be cast on Undead baseline. This is actually changed. Exorcism can now be cast on any target, regardless of Undead, Humanoid, Dragonkin, Beast, doesn't matter, it can be cast on anything. Meaning, theoretically, the, this should also be able to be used against player targets, and it has a 100% chance to crit against Undead and Demon now. So this is probably what you're going to be using, in most cases, a Rep Paladin. There's one more leg rune here. So there's five leg runes that they've shown us so far. The other one is Rebuke. Rebuke interrupts spell casting and prevents any spell in that school from being cast for two seconds. Some people call this a kick or a counter spell. It is a spell interrupt. It is a kick that they get in Cataclysm. It's actually not entirely a PvP thing because there's times where you can kick mobs in PvE uh, while you're leveling. But in most cases, Rebuke is, is associated with PvP. Next up, you have your Glove Runes. There's a few Glove Runes that have been shown to us so far. There's Beacon of Light. Beacon of Light. Is a, is a healing rune for Holy Paladins. If you're, if you're primarily a healer, you're gonna be using this thing to set a target as the beacon of light and any heal that you cast on anybody in your raid, in your party, uh, it'll also redirect 100% of that healing to the beacon of light. So what you can do is you could, theoretically, you take beacon of light, let's say you're healing a dungeon, you put it on the tank and then you go and heal a DPS or yourself or somebody else that's taking damage and uh, you don't have to worry about not healing the tank. So now you're healing two targets. Your, your throughput is 200% essentially. Uh, very powerful. Beacon of Light is very, very powerful. And uh, you can only have one target beaconed at a time and it's a one minute buff. The next rune is going to be Hand of Reckoning. Hand of Reckoning is going to be a taunt, yes. In Season of Discovery, Paladins are finally going to be getting a taunt. This is one of the primary complaints about Protection Paladins, about Tank Paladins, is the fact that they don't have a taunt. Uh, it's a little bit overstated, but uh, still very valid that without a taunt, it makes tanking as a Paladin very, very difficult. This also is gonna increase the threat bonus from Righteous Fury. And it's also going to give you the opportunity to gain mana back uh, whenever you get healed. So this is going to help your mana pool. This is going to help your threat. And this is going to help your ability to uh, get that aggro. It's also going to help your mitigation as well. So uh, while Righteous Fury is active, this reduces the amount of damage you take by 20% if your health is below 35%. Hand of Reckoning is is the rune that you pick if you're tanking. It's, it's very, very, very strong. Finally... The one that the crowd went wild for at BlizzCon, Crusader Strike. Crusader Strike is going to be an instant strike that does 75% of weapon damage. This is, this is before season discovery. Stuff might change. Stuff might get buffed and moved. Um, but currently, as, the, as of this video, it does 75% weapon damage, and it's on a six-second cooldown. Uh, and it also regenerates 2% of your maximum mana. So it doesn't cost any mana, and it actually takes your mana back up little by little every time you cast it, every six seconds. That's gonna be your primary strike as a Paladin. Paladins don't have any strikes in vanilla, typically, but in Season of Discovery, they're giving you Crusader Strike. It was the 41 point talent in Burning Crusade. So people are very excited about this. Uh, I, I would actually hope to see that Crusader Strike um, gets, a, uh, gets modified a little bit to be closer to the Burning Crusade version. Uh, at some point where it will also refresh multiple judgments on the target. I, I hope that they do that, but uh, but we'll see what happens. That's currently where we're at with our runes. That is all the runes that we have seen so far prior to launch in Season of Discovery for Paladins and my recommendations for what you would pick. Also in this video, I wanna talk about a few different tips, a few combos, a, a few things that you can do while leveling as a Paladin Classic WoW. Uh, the first of which is Seal of the Crusader. What a lot of people think the gameplay of this is while leveling is seal the crusader judgment he's now debuffed and takes increased holy damage then i cast seal of righteousness if i judge righteousness it does a little bit more damage that is true that is factually true however in practice while you're leveling uh seal of the crusader excuse me judgment of the crusader is something that is not really valuable because if you come out and you just judge if you go righteousness judge righteousness so seal the uh, sorry seal of righteousness judgment seal of righteousness attack 
the overall amount of damage that you do from from target to target as you're leveling is is going to be much higher that holy damage increase that you have you're it's it's going to be less than the amount of damage that you get from just judging righteousness outright and hitting hitting a judgment for like 30 damage judging righteousness and then just doing a a, a 20 or 20 or 30 holy damage bonus is going to be worth more damage than uh the amount of damage increase that you'll get from Seal of the Crusader, from Judgment of the Crusader, sorry, before the target dies. Now, if, if you're fighting something for a long time, the value of that judgment is much higher because you're fighting it over time. Instantaneous damage is going to be worth more DPS while you're leveling. So uh, I would not judge Crusader in most cases. Now, Seal of the Crusader, where it does have some value, is if you're leveling up weapon skills and stuff. Let's say you're, you, know, you start out with a mace as a human paladin. If, uh, if I gain axe skill or sword skill or something, I would want to use Seal of the Crusader to attack things more quickly to be able to get my skill up faster. So that's that's the real use of Seal of the Crusader uh, while leveling. Another tip I want to talk about is, and I, and I touched on this earlier, is the five second rule for mana regen. Uh, sometimes it is actually better to just not cast anything. Let's say a target is low on health, right? They're at like 10% health or something, and you have Seal of Righteousness up, you cast Seal of Righteousness 10 seconds ago. Your your judgment is now off cooldown, and you can just judge it and kill it if you want. Uh, but if your mana, let's say you're let's say you don't have water on you, right? Which is another thing. Let's say you don't have any water on you. Just just wait it out and just auto attack the next hit because whenever you cast that judgment, it takes your spirit stat and it negates it. So you need to not cast a spell for five seconds to get the value of what spirit does. Uh, as a paladin, whenever you cast a spell, your spirit isn't being used at all. But if you don't cast a spell for five seconds, your spirit regen works. Your spirit regen uh, kicks in. So your mana will start regening in combat. And if you cast that judgment, you're now expelling your seal, you're casting judgment, which costs mana, and then uh, you're killing your, your mana regen. So sometimes it's better just to like, hey, I'm going to swing in like a second and a half. I'll just wait out the swing and I'll, and I'll finish it, right? Now, let's say you miss or something like that, whatever. Uh, the, the key thing is, sometimes it is a good idea to just not cast anything and just to keep your mana regen ticking. Some of you guys might have noticed this while, while I'm playing sometimes, where, where I'll just sit there and I'll, and I'll just wait it out, because it reduces that downtime in between kills a little bit. Uh, the next tip that I have is, you know, speaking of mana regen and stuff, it is always wise to keep some water on you. Uh, to keep some water on you, to keep some food on you. This is, this is like, this is kind of basic wild knowledge, but some of you guys might be, uh, might be new. Make sure to have some water on you to, to be able to drink up between pulls so you have enough mana to, to be able to kill the target and be able to keep on moving. This will reduce your downtime a lot. Again, what do you want to do? You want to reduce downtime, you want to increase damage, and you want to reduce the amount of damage that you take. So those are like the three key things. The next kind of combo or trick that I want to talk about is Judgment of Command. Judgment of Command is a, is a direct holy damage attack. You have Seal of Command up, direct damage. You can get this at level 20 once you're 10 points in retribution, right? It's your 11 point talent. If the target is stunned, let's say you, you cast Hammer of Justice on the target. When the target is stunned, Judgment of Command does double damage. Also, Judgment of Command, I talked about how Judgment of Righteousness is based off of your spell critical strike chance. Judgment of Command is based off of your melee critical strike chance. So uh, it has a higher chance to crit as well. So if your Judgment of Command crits while the target is stunned, you're essentially doing four times the amount of damage that you would do if the target is not stunned and uh, it's not a crit. Pretty cool. Judgment of Command is big, big damage. Another thing to keep in mind with Seal of Command is you want to have as slow of a weapon as possible because it is, uh, its proc chance is determined by a, a feature called proc per minute. How proc per minute is calculated, and in this case it's seven, the amount of attacks that occur within 60 seconds with Seal of Command, and you want to take that number, and you want to divide, you want to take seven, and you want to divide seven by that number, that's your proc chance. So, the slower weapon that you have, the uh, higher the proc chance for Seal of Command, and your Seal of Command DPS will go up. The reason it goes up is not only will a higher percentage of your attacks have a chance to proc Seal of Command, but your Seal of Command attacks will hit harder uh, because it's based directly off your weapon damage. Slower weapons have higher weapon damage, typically, because it's you know if it's all the same DPS, the slower the weapon, the higher damage it'll be. And slower weapons scale harder with strength 
because of how attack power attack power is calculated as a part of DPS. Big slow weapon is the ideal situation for Sila Command. Another tip that I want to talk about is uh, the combo of Hammer of Justice into Holy Light. In Vanilla WoW, you have a global cooldown of one and a half seconds. At low levels especially, this, apply, this applies at max level and it applies right whenever you get Hammer of Justice, but you should know this if you're a low level. If I cast Hammer of Justice, it is a three second stun with a one and a half second global cooldown. So if I hodge somebody, if I hammer somebody, I cannot cast for a second and a half. So what I would want to do, let's say I'm really low on health. I'm about to die. I have some mana left. I don't have my bubble, right? Or maybe I don't want to use my bubble, something like that. You want to hammer of justice the target and you want to move away. Either, either full speed strafe or turn and run, don't backpedal because it's it's too slow. But you wanna you wanna full speed move away during the duration of that global cooldown for one and a half seconds. Because you you wanna separate a little bit. Why do you wanna separate? Because if I stand there and I wait to cast my heal, my holy light is a two and a half second cast. So if I have a three second stun with a one and a half second global, that leaves one and a half seconds on the target where he's stunned and I'm casting, which leaves a remaining one second that I can get hit. Having that one and a half second time running away buffer, that's a really weird way of explaining that, but having that time that I'm running away for one and a half seconds will allow me to get that additional uh, second uh, of healing cast time without getting hit. Because realistically, like, you know, there's there's leeway and there's some other weird mechanics, but uh, long story short, if I'm running during that global cooldown, then I'll be able to get the heal off, hopefully, before they're able to hit me out of that stun. So uh, if you're trying to stun heal, it's wise to keep moving and to, to separate a little bit before your holy light, before you cast holy light. So the next thing I want to talk about is seal of justice, judgment of justice specifically. I mentioned what it does a little bit earlier, but... Uh, if you have your judgment off cooldown, let's say you're fighting something, let's say you're low on health, you're neck and neck, you're about to die, and uh, you're about to kill something, but you're about to die too, and you're standing in there and you're fighting strong, right? When it gets low on health, it decides to run away and try and pull more. If your judgment is off cooldown and you have the mana to do so, you can take off whatever seal you currently have, you can replace it with seal of justice, so you cast seal of justice and then you judgment justice. Whenever you judge seal of justice, it will keep him from fleeing. It'll keep him from running away. Now you can cast this early on too, but this will also apply if they're in the process of running away. They will turn around, they'll come back to attack you. That's something that I think a lot of people don't know is that you don't actually have to have judgment of justice on the target from the beginning. Uh, you can cast it as they start to run away. And let's say you forget or you just, you just don't want to, right? Um, if you have your judgment off cooldown, then boom, you can hit it right then and, and he won't run away and go pull more mobs and get you killed. The next piece of advice that I have uh, is purify. I think some of these like support spells for, for new players sometimes, they, they don't really pay attention to the support spells and, and what they can really do. While you're leveling in vanilla WoW, you're going to come across a lot of places where you're fighting you know, spiders and, and you know, animals that bite you and give you a disease, spiders that give you poison, that kind of stuff. Uh, Purify gets replaced by a spell way down the road called Cleanse, but uh, which also reduce, which also removes magic effects. However, Purify on its own uh, gets rid of poisons and diseases. And if you get poisoned or diseased by, by a monster that you're fighting, uh, you can just purify it off and you can reduce a lot of damage. And uh, you know, you can keep yourself from you can keep yourself from getting killed or uh, something like that. This is just something to watch out for. It's like, okay, it's, it's, some people might listen to that. Like some of you guys who are experienced veterans, you're like, okay, yeah, of course, just purify poison. But, uh, the intent here is, is for people that maybe are new to Paladin or, uh, new to the game and they kind of ignore things that don't do damage. Uh, that's what I've noticed. Like I've, I've been playing with a lot of streamers lately and, uh, I've, I'm getting to third party experience. What like, how a new player to the game might see things. So I, I've, I've been watching a lot and being like, oh, okay, it's funny because they might completely ignore something that's very valuable, an ability that's very valuable, just because they, they can't think of a use case for it. Uh, but it's just because they're new to the game and that's fine. Another thing I want to talk about is the efficacy of Consecration as a damaging attack while you're leveling. Consecration is one of those abilities that it costs a lot of mana. And it does, it costs the same amount of mana regardless of how many targets it's hitting. 
So if you're hitting one target with your Consecration, it costs a lot of mana, and in most cases, it's not even going to be worth using while you're leveling solo. Uh, you probably are not even going to want to use it single target. You can if you want, but if you Consecrate something solo, then you're just burning a lot of mana for very little damage. If you want to increase the efficiency of, of how much you're doing with uh, how your mana is being spent with Consecrate, uh, ideally, you might be killing two or three things at the same time that are slightly lower level than you. And that way you have like three times the throughput with the same mana cost. This will allow you to basically get, get more experience per hour. Just something to think about, right? Obviously you can do whatever you want. Like I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people, whenever they talk about vanilla WoW or, you know, this will happen with Season of Discovery. This, this has happened for years with vanilla and, and every version of WoW. Everybody talks in absolutes like you have to do this this way. You, you cannot do this. It's, it's, very, it's very limiting and it, and it kills a lot of discourse and it makes a lot of new players feel bad. And, and I think it's just kind of BS. I, I don't like it. What I'm talking about with a lot of these guides is just these are, these are some things that uh, I do or I think you should do that will, will help a new player uh, play the game a little bit better, a little bit more efficiently if they want to. So with all that being said, like I said, at the beginning of the video, this is kind of a passion project for me to uh, make these guide videos. I, I used to make guide videos. I, I made private server content back in 2017. That's how my YouTube channel got started with me and, and my friend Dracova and doing, doing a lot of like theory crafting stuff on stream, doing guide stuff, talking about things. And uh, I, I've kind of got that juice back. I kind of got that fire back and uh, this is, this is definitely going to be more of a passion project for me, but let me know what you guys think. I wanted to make a, a quick, concise video, uh, a guide video for you guys who might be new to Paladin, new to the game, new to Classic. Uh, maybe you're, you play Retail WoW and you're new to Classic for Season of Discovery specifically. If people like this, if people like this kind of content, leave me some feedback. Put, a, put down a comment, let me know what you think about it. Uh, let me let me know what you think I should expand upon if I do more of these and uh, like the video that helps me a lot share it around like I said it's a, it's a passion project it's important to me uh, I like doing it I think it, I think it'd be fun to run it back again like we did back in 2017 a little bit so I hope you guys enjoyed make sure to uh, make sure to like make sure to subscribe turn on your notification to the YouTube channel I do literally everything here just scroll through my videos I play all kinds of games uh, classic WoW is my passion. It's 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 the whether I'm playing it actively or not, it really is at its core like what I love. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys have fun in Season of Discovery, and uh, let me know if if you guys like this. Maybe I'll make more guide videos talking about much more in depth stuff with paladins or uh, even doing some some more beginner guides for the other classes and whatnot. So we'll see you guys next time.